months, my earliest years, I was in a hostel and we all used to live in one room. A lot of people will look at you and they won't believe that you're going to be able to do it. Someone says you can't do something, show them. Tell, show the world that you can do it. A lot of people would ring me and say, look, Shazan, I need this car. Can you get it me? I would I would get it like quickly, just like that. Those people are cowards, aren't they? You know, because they don't have the courage to actually do something to create something. Welcome to another episode of the Tai Kamo podcast, the number one platform for sharing stories worth telling. So if that's your kind of jam, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Guys, buckle up because you're about to embark on an incredible journey. We have truly an exceptional guest joining us today none other than the founder of ACG Motors, the face of the car game, Shazan. How you doing, brother? Welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here, Habib. Uh, thank you for inviting me to your Tiger Camel podcast, and uh, we'll do our best to try and make it as beneficial for your audience as possible. Smash it, brother. Nah, no doubt it's going to be a good one, bro. Honestly, yeah. I can't wait to deep dive into your, into your story. Um, you know, what's incredible, what, what's incredible is how you got to where you are today. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of people know you, bro, you know, that deal with you, know you in the community, you're this friendly guy, always smiling, yeah. approachable. But I think they're going to be shocked about, you know, how you got to where you are today yeah. as we're going to deep dive into your story. I think with a lot of people, when they come over to me, they don't ask me for my autograph. They ask me, can I buy my next car from you? <laughs> That's pretty much what they asked me to do is that yeah. I want to buy a car from you. Even today, before I came here, I was in the gym training. I've done my hour workout straight after someone recognized me and says, I need to come see you on Monday because I want to buy a car from you. So that's a hundred grand sale made just by someone recognizing me and knowing what I do. Yeah. So obviously <clears throat> that's took years to create or over the years I've created that, uh, the recognition for being a car dealer. A lot of people knowing what I do, what I'm about. I buy cars, I sell cars. A lot of people know this and they know how I sell cars. <laughs> Uh, so the big thing is what I've achieved over the years is that people actually want to buy cars off me and the, the beauty of it is a lot of people do recognize me from even the gym or wherever I am and there's been stories that I could share with you I might share one or two with you later today uh, where I have bought cars in not normal circumstances and I've sold cars in not norm- normal circumstances but yeah Carry on and uh, let's, t- let's, let's see where we can take this. Now you set the theme there, bro, because at the end of the day, you're dealing with cars like Lamborghinis yeah. as well at the top range, right? That's right. And if you think about it, bro, like these are cars that people, the everyday person can't really afford. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? For example, the average salary in the UK doing a bit of research is around 30K. That's right. Do you know what I mean? I think London is about 35. Mm-hmm. So if you do the maths, it's going to take a lifetime before you can afford one of these cars. Not taking into consideration that you need the garage to go with it, the house to go with it. You know what I mean? You're going to be mm. geriatric, my friend, before you can afford that car. My point in mentioning that is because there's another way to make money. That's right. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And we're going to deep dive into that, um, your story and how you got to where you are yeah. today. But I think it's fitting, yeah, to start from the very beginning to give people the context, right, from the ground up. Mm-hmm. So talk to me, bro, what your upbringing and childhood was like, man. Yeah. So before I go into that, one thing uh, which I want to share with you guys is that in life, whatever you set out to achieve, if you set your benchmark to wanting a 30 grand salary, then that's what you're going to earn. Um, So during your life, if you set yourself bigger targets, if you set yourself bigger goals, bigger dreams, then you will achieve those goals. So the main thing is don't set your boundaries too low. Don't set your targets too low. Set them very high. and this is what I did in the beginning. Uh, Habib mentioned to talk about my early upbringing. Now, early upbringing wasn't easy for me. You know, I came from humble beginnings. Um, in my early years, my earliest years, I was in a hostel. And in that hostel, it's not uh, a normal place to be. You know, your father's not there, your mum's there, your family's like, I had one sister and my mum, and we all used to live in one room. Yeah. So just to show you guys that I was from the lowest of the lowest, you know, but I set myself a big dream to own a car showroom one day to become a businessman. And that's exactly what I became. So one thing I want to share with you guys is that no matter what, where you come from, no matter, even if you're in the worst positions in life, even if you're poor, one thing you will realize the pattern that you will realize among successful people is that a lot of them come from nothing, but they become something. 
Now, the only way they become something is because they have a goal and they have a dream. And without having that goal, you'll never be able to achieve that goal. So one thing you need to do is inspire yourself, have a goal, have a dream. Don't just have a normal dream. Everybody, everybody wants to have a house, have a car, get married and have children and then die. What I want you guys to do is that have a bigger dream, have one of the biggest dreams, even things, use your imagination and think about things to do that a lot of people can't achieve. Now, the thing is, every, any successful person who's ever achieved something will tell you one thing, that they wouldn't have been able to achieve anything if they didn't believe in their goal and they didn't believe that they could do it. But the most important thing to do for you guys is to take that one step to try and achieve your goal and have that dream and have that vision. So that's one of the things that I would give you is that have the dream and have the goal. So the first step you would say, just to summarize what you said, shoot for the moon and you land among the stars, mm -hmm. meaning have a big freaking goal, yeah. man. Even if you fail, you're yeah. still going to smash it. You're yeah, still yeah. going to land somewhere that's a decent place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a scary place to be when you're in that position, when you're broke and you're poor and a lot of people will look at you and they won't believe that you're going to be able to do it. A lot of people told me I wouldn't be able to achieve half the things I've achieved in my life. Um, but I believed in myself and that's the main thing. Whenever someone gives you negative energy, don't take it in. Be a positive person and believe in yourself, no matter what anyone says, and take up the challenge. Someone says you can't do something, show them, tell, show the world that you can do it. That's what it's all about, showing the people out there what you're all about. Uh, and the only way to do that is build your self-confidence and believe in yourself, simple as. Okay, so let's explore, because you mentioned the hostel there, and That's I'm right. thinking a lot of people are going to think, yo, well, hold on a second, yeah. I know Shazan, yeah. I didn't know this about him. Yeah. What series of events took place leading you to be in a hostel, bro? In my earliest years, you know, when I was about two, three, four years old, the earliest thing I remember is being in a hostel. Now, at the time, I looked at my mother, I didn't really ask her why we're in this position, but my father was absent from my life in my early years. And later on, I found out, you know, certain things which would help me understand why my father's not around. But even when I was going through life, I didn't really stop to think, OK, I didn't ask my mother any questions because I didn't want to stress her. I didn't want to worry her. But one thing I did do is observe the struggle that she went through. And it wasn't easy for us as children because... When I was going to school and I used to see kids, they had their mum, they had their dad, they had a provider. I didn't have that. So when I used to go to school, I used to see children. They used to go to the shops, have 25p 20, on them, go sp spend it on sweets. I couldn't do that. They used to have nice shoes on. I couldn't have those nice shoes. So I had to live in the means that I was given at that time. But I knew that one day I'll be able to change this. That's the main thing. I didn't let my circumstances of life keep me there. I dreamed of something bigger and I wanted something more from life. And anything you put in life is what life gives you. So some people would say that life is like a mirror to how you think. If you think you can achieve something, then life will give you that same thing back. So that, that's exactly it. I wanted to be a businessman. I wanted to earn money. I wanted to build loads of wealth. And the only way I could do that is simply by putting in the work to be able to get my dividends from life. What, what was your circle of influence like growing up, meaning your friends? Because they say you're the average of the five people you hang around with. See, when I, when I looked at uh, my people around me, they weren't doing the best thing. So, you know, I, there were negative influences around me who used to smoke, who used to drink. What the streets taught me when I was younger is that's someone that I don't want to be. So when I looked at someone and I saw, oh, this kid is, for example, he is unsuc unsuccessful in life or he's gone to prison for something he's done uh, or for a mistake he's made. I used to look at that and I used to think, OK, I understand why he's done it to earn a bit of money. But the, the bottom line is he's now suffering in prison and his mother is at home. She's crying. She's upset. She doesn't have a son for 10 years or 20 years. And I think one of the most important things is to highlight that reality because we're living in a society where it's uh, glamorized to become a drug dealer. At the end of the day, I look, like, I, I look at a drug dealer as being an unsuccessful person. So why would I want to be like that? But... The children of today that are looking at these guys are seeing them selling drugs. 
They're rapping about selling drugs and they showing the world that this is what we do and this is what the trap life's all about. Why? Because other kids are looking at them people and they're thinking, oh, it's cool to be like that because they've got the fame, they've got the name, they've got the money. Now, the thing is, there's nothing wrong with wanting money. There's nothing wrong with wanting fame or a name. It's important. Those things are important to be successful. But the way they're doing it and what they're glamorizing is wrong. And that's one thing that needs to be highlighted, a reality that people don't really talk about. So you made an interesting point, which I think people can benefit from, which is if you want to change, you need to watch what you're feeding into your mind. Yeah, If you're definitely. constantly feeding drill music and all that, you're going to be one of be gang banging and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly what I said before. I said you will be what you think about. So if you want to be a rapper, you're looking at a rapper and you're thinking, I'm going to become like that. I want to be like that. You are going to be like that. But then you will suffer the consequences that he's going to suffer as well. So you never saw that reality side of it. He never showed you that. He only showed you the highlights. He showed you the nice cars, the nice watches, the nice women. But he never showed you the times he was in prison and he was sitting in a cell and he was wondering, what have I done in my life? I should have never done this. So that's the reality that people need to sort of uh, expose. That's the actual reality side of those things. Yeah. So let's summarize what you just said there so far. So the first step is to really believe uh, there's a quote, bro. The man who says he can and the man who says he can't are yeah. both correct. Both correct, yeah. So first step is to believe. Um, let's explore, you know, because a lot of people, bro, they don't know what they want to do, mm -hmm. which I think is the second step is to have mm -hmm. a clear goal, have That's a right. clear vision. You knew exactly what industry you want to get into, which is the car industry, the motor game. See, the thing is, uh, before the car industry, I had an idea of what I wanted to be. So I wanted to be successful. So you have to adopt behaviors of a successful person one thing you will realize is successful people get on with successful people and unsuccessful people get on with unsuccessful people the reason for that is because successful people share the same behaviors and ideas and mentality so uh, when i would interact with successful people it doesn't really matter what industry that you go in any person who is great at what they do and is successful in that field will have the same qualities of a person in a different field, but he's successful there as well. So one thing I want to highlight is, yeah, it's not one business that's going to make you successful. Go behind that and understand it's the behaviors, it's the mentality that's going to make you successful in life. So why did you pick the motor industry? One thing I understood when I was younger, uh, I read somewhere that the most highly paid job is a man that can sell something to someone, right? If you, any, any business out there requires a salesman, requires someone to sell something, whether it's an idea, a product, or a service. So in the early years that I had, I sort of studied psychology, philosophy, people, communication skills. These are skills which I studied at an early age which I knew I'm going to need one day because the path that I chose was being a salesman. So in the early years, obviously, I went and looked into sales because I felt like I had the personality to be able to sell something. So when I was learning, I knew I could build on that. The car industry itself, it's got a bad name. Yeah. All right, let's get real in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's known as sleazy salesmen, people selling dodgy cars and all that kind of stuff. You felt like, you know what, I want to get into this industry of buying and selling cars and yeah. you're confident you can succeed in this space. Yeah. So I, I obviously noticed, uh, what could you say, a gap in the market uh, for a car dealer that's going to be honest, that has a great reputation, is able to quickly react to something. So if somebody wants something, I can provide it there and then. You know, uh, I'm quick to react to certain things. In the early years, what I did was... Um, I went to go work for a car dealership. And uh, when I was working for that car dealership, I was on a salary that was only 800 pound. And, but the one thing I was doing at that uh, dealership was I was selling loads of cars. A salary for 800 pounds? Yeah, um, 800 per, per month or? Per month, yeah. Okay. So uh, I was undervalued. Yeah. And I knew I was undervalued. Over the years, I realized that this isn't gonna be the place where I wanna be. Whatever you value yourself, whatever goal you set up for yourself, whatever standard you set for yourself, that's what you'll have. So if you if you go back to an average salary of 30 grand, then that's what you're gonna earn. If you uh, set yourself a target of being a millionaire, then 
that you you will earn a million uh, you will earn a million you will get to that level but you've got to set it like how did it all start for you so the car game started for me so uh, obviously in the early years i never had a lot of money but one thing i would do was uh, i would always find some small jobs here and there to do for example one of the jobs that one of my uh, again one of my friends called me up he says oh there's a there's a company here called g4s and they need security guards so I said, okay. Uh, he says, oh, but have you got an SIA badge? I says, no. I said, okay, uh, why don't you become a steward? So I said, okay, because a steward doesn't require an SIA, SIA badge. So I went there uh, and I just put the hours in to earn a bit of money. And then with that money, I invested it into a watch uh, in the beginning. I just went to an auction, bought a couple of watches, and I would try and flip them for a little profit, uh, for example, on eBay. And then um, I sold one watch, made like £50 profit, and I liked that. I was like, yeah, that's not bad. And then uh, my second watch, I broke even. So one thing you understand is any anything that you do, go into it thinking, yeah, you, you know, with that positive attitude that you're going to try to make something. But just because you've not made anything doesn't mean that you should deter from it. And then uh, my next product was a car. So then I thought, okay, let me get to a level where I can buy a car. So I spent... I think I spent £200 at that time to buy a car and I made a £100 profit. What was the car that you bought? What was your first car? Uh, so the first car that I bought was a Corsa 1.2. Right. Yeah. I bought that privately. Uh, I fixed it up, you know, MOT'd it, put it, advertised it, and then I sold it from home. Um, and then from there, I kind of understood that, oh, it, it was quite enjoyable doing this. So then I sold my second car, third car, fourth car. So... Whatever I was doing in life, I would always be in and around cars. I would always buy and sell cars at that point. So even if I was working at a car de dealership as a salesman, on the side, I was always I would always buy and sell cars. Uh, so everybody was aware of that. That's what I used to do. So over the years, uh, when people realized, you know, this is what this guy does. He buys and sells cars. You build that reputation with people. You keep that reputation, uh, sorry, you keep that communication with those same customers and they'll come back to you to buy something else. So all I did was just, at that point, just create my customer base, uh, get my name out there uh, so people know that I buy and sell cars. That's what I'm known for. And then a lot of people would ring me and say, look, Shazan, I need this car. Can you get it me? I would, I would get it like quickly, just like that, within yeah. a minute. Within a minute, I would make a phone call, try and get that car and get it delivered to them straight away yeah so you started from home mm -hmm. because now you've got a unit you've got mm -hmm. you know a nice jazzy unit looks yeah. wicked yeah um, but prior to that starting off it was yeah. purely from home yeah yeah so any successful person will always start from something um i wasn't given like a million pound to go and set up a business but i knew that one day i will get there uh again going back to my point if you have that that goal of wanting to achieve something i, I had a vision that i want to own a showroom one day and ha have a car dealership that's going to be selling supercars, high performance cars. And it's the high performance car market that I wanted to target. That is the, the market that I wanted. Why? But in the beginning... Why, why, why that market? I, I, saw, I saw that um, it, it was... See, when you buy a Corsa, you don't get excited by it. Yeah? So you, you're just buying it. Uh, you're going to damage it. You don't care. Um, you're just buying it to get from A to B. It's just a cheap budget car. But that's not what I wanted to sell. I took more enjoyment out of selling uh, high-performance cars because it, it made people smile. You know, a high-performance car with a lot of power, a lot of speed, it made people happy. Uh, so I, you could say I, I was a bit of a... I'm a bit of a petrol head. You could say I'm a petrol head. I love, I love uh, high-performance cars. I love supercars. Uh, I get excited by them. And then my customers that I meet uh, are very similar, so we share that passion. In the car scene, obviously, everybody has a, a particular car, uh, and there's always different groups. You know, you've got your VAG groups, you've got your BMW enthusiasts, you've got your Merck enthusiasts. So all these enthusiasts, one thing they share is that passion for the cars. Uh, and then I always feel like ACG Motors kind of co incorporates all them together in, into one car dealership, which offers all the cars that they desire and they want and they love. So just to make sure I understood correctly, brother, mm -hmm. obviously you had a rough upbringing, mm -hmm. the hostile mm -hmm. situation that you had going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you decided that, you know what, 
I want to change this. You change your mindset, started mm. learning about psychology and all that kind of stuff. Then you had a clear vision, a clear goal. Like, listen, I want to be successful. Yeah. Right. I started working in a, you know, um, a, a car showroom, is it? Yeah. yeah. Started working in a car yeah, showroom, yeah. developing the skills, yeah. stuff like that, building your client base. And, and I, was, I was getting paid £800 a month to be a yeah. car salesman. It wasn't the most lucrative salary, yeah. but I knew that I will need this experience. You, you know, sort of, in, in you the, sort of used it as a stepping stone, would you say? I used it as a stepping stone to sort of get myself out there a little bit, uh, so people are aware. Like I built some customers along the way. Um, a lot of people like knew me. Like so, when I obviously opened my own car showroom at one point, a lot of people already knew me because they already dealt with me. So when people would make phone calls and they'd ring me and say, "Oh." I would say hi, AC Jim. Is that you, Shazan? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's me. So it would, it would, it would make that sale so much easier because they've, they've already dealt with me in the past. Yeah. So, uh, what, like I said, uh, one thing was that a lot of people did enjoy dealing with me, um, and that was one of my, you could say, advantages uh, in sales or in business is that a lot of people remembered me. They would, they wouldn't forget me. So whenever they think of a car, they'd be like, yeah, Shazan sold me that car. So obviously I've created that in their mind uh, when I communicate with them, how I deal with them. Uh, see, if you deal with someone correctly and you you say, you, you do exactly as you say, a, a lot of people will remember you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's so interesting yeah. because the way I look at it, bro, you're not really in the car business. Mm -hmm. now, let me elaborate. Yeah, yeah. People thinking, well, what's going on, mate? Mm -hmm. yeah, what I mean is you're really in the people's business. That's right. Like, how, you, how you, this is a game where you need to build trust, build That's rapport. Right. Like I said, it's got a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. um, and you feel like you could succeed in this space. You can That's change right. it. Yeah. Um, and as we just spoke about, you started off at home, buying mm -hmm. and selling cars. You've already transferred that reputation from your old job to this. Build a bit of client base. Mm -hmm. How did you build that trust what's your strategy so uh, how you build that trust is it's the energy that you give people so my the way i think a lot of the times how you think and what you believe in your heart a lot of people can feel that energy somehow so uh, a lot of the times uh, you know a lot of people say oh i sold you my car so because obviously i'm a, uh, we buy cars that's all, all we do right so we buy cars put them in the showroom we sell them so when I buy cars, I always ask the question, what made you sell it to me w compared to another person? Good question. And, and they, always, they always say is I could sense that you were serious and I could sense you were trustworthy. Yeah. Now that's without even seeing me. Yeah. So one thing I would say is that however you think in your heart, like I'm trying to really buy this car, right? And I'm really trying to give them a decent deal where they're getting a good deal and I'm getting a good deal, yeah, where I can make a profit. So where both parties win, people can sense that this guy's a genuine guy who literally just wants to buy my car and he is serious about giving me the money. And one thing in life is when people take you seriously and they understand that if this means I'm going to get 30 grand in my account today, then this is the guy that I need to be dealing with. Uh, just yesterday we bought a car it was about 40 grand and we went all the way to london for it and uh, i asked the lady i go well what made you deal with us and she says because you sounded trustworthy and every other person sounded like a time waster just just the sound of a person can make that difference so one thing i would say is that um if you intend to be trustworthy a lot of people will sense that energy from you you mentioned a lot of it is now for you buying cars, right? Mm -hmm. So do people contact you? I'll give you an example. So we buy any car values, a Golf R at 15 grand, right? But in the current market value, it's worth a lot more. Now, it, we obviously know a lot about the experience and knowledge that we have as professionals. We, we know, we inspect that car, we look at that car, we take into account the spec of it. So, for example, if a car has a panoramic glass sunroof or a certain sound system or a camera system or better wheels or a better kit, we obviously put a little bit of value into the product uh, and we obviously end up giving the client more money for it because ultimately that's what it's all about. If you've got a car and you undersell that car to rebuy any car, for example, uh, they would undervalue it and you would get the least amount for your money, right? But if you contact someone who specializes in these type of cars, they will look at that product and value it more. Yeah. So ultimately, this is where that 
uh, I, I guess a lot of people would contact me because they understand that in this game, I've built up a lot of experience over the years and I value things accordingly to the specification, the condition, the history. So this is stuff that uh, if you delve deeper into, th into things, you understand them little differences make that difference uh, in, in your buying and in your selling. It you're, makes a massive you're difference. You're talking about specs there, isn't it? Yeah. So you, one of your, you know, in your decision-making process, yeah. when you're buying a car, uh -huh. That's where the money is made, meaning you have to think like an investor, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Right. So what, what would you, it's a bit of a general question, depends on the car, depends on the manufacturer, I understand. Yeah. But generally speaking, what do you look for in a car before you buy it? What does it need to have? So uh, because of the reputation that I have, it, it needs to have good history, so full service history. Uh, it, it needs to be a HPI clear car, number two. The condition of the vehicle needs to be pristine. Um, and the specification of the car needs to be really good. So these are the four things which are the main things we look for. And the reason for that is obviously because we don't sell damaged cars. We don't sell cars with part of service history. We don't sell cars, you know, with MOT, uh, MOT is missing. Uh, and we don't sell standard cars. We, we sell cars that are very desirable yeah. to people. Because uh, we believe that uh, when you're buying a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way to 150, 200 grand car, when you're buying them kind of cars, you need a bit of value for money. You need the better sound system. You need the better camera system. You need the better comfortable seats. You need the better things. Oh, uh, and typically, what are you, what margin are you looking to make when you buy a car? What's like your, you know? So for, for 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 the investment that we make, it differs uh, from car to car. But I would say generally we make at least 10 percent on every car. Yeah, that's yeah. like the industry standard, right? Yeah, that's 10%. The standard. Yeah. Okay, I want to go back to the networking thing we mentioned earlier, meaning that when you, you know, how people buy into you as a person, mm -hmm. because I think I want to explore that a little bit more, because mm -hmm. that's quite general, like, you know, people can sense. Yeah. How do you make people sense that, you know what, you're, you're the guy to go to? Because let's say I'm starting off in the car mm -hmm. game, and I'm genuinely a nice guy, and I want to start buying and selling cars. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't know you, mate. You ain't got no reputation. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing. You got nothing to show for it. So what? Because in the early days, I want to really dive into that. Yeah. I think we kind of just brushed over it. Yeah, but yeah. like, you know, you're buying and selling cars. Is it making sure you don't sell dodgy cars? If anything's wrong with the car, you say, look, this is what's wrong with the car, bro. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you up front. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, is if you sell a good product, uh, when people buy it and they deal with you, it's in your dealing, isn't it? So when someone is happy with the experience that they have with you, they tend to remember you and they want to deal with you again. Uh, but in the early years, it was a challenge because at the end of the day, I was selling cars from home. So one of the things I did was uh, I went over to one of my friends and I says to him, I need a website making. But the website that I need making needs to be very professional. It needs to have an outlook where people instantly look at the uh, website and they think professional, trustworthy. We were always gonna sell, uh, we were always gonna sell a good product, but for people to take it seriously out there, uh, we need that, uh, that website for people to look at. So people look into that and think, Oh, they've got a website. Let me research into them. Let me look into them. Let me have a look at their reviews. So these obviously played a massive role in um, in you know portraying a good reputation That's as well. Marketing, right? Yeah, it's, got, it's marketing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, even though I was selling cars from home, yeah, a lot of the times um, I would talk on the phone as if I'm in a car showroom. So for example, uh, I would answer the phone, say hi. Um, I think that. I, at that time, what was it called? Did I have a company name at that time? In case you're wondering, Janaid, uh, who's, who's oh. Shazan's friends in the background as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was with him. Because <laughs> Shazan is looking at this face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, guy, that's why Shazan is looking on yeah, his, yeah. his right. <laughs> yeah, so I was with him. I went to his room uh, and I says, I need to create this website, this brand, this, this yeah. name. And at that time, obviously, I created ACG Motors uh, and we created the brand there and then, the website, everything there and then. But I was still selling cars from home. So... Uh, when I was selling a car to somebody and someone rang, uh, I would answer the phone saying, hi, see Jamal's, how can I help? Um, and then, you know, we'd go on from there taking the inquiry. And then I would always say to them, uh, you do know we offer free delivery to your house. Uh, so if, if someone bought like a 20 grand car off me, uh, I would go to London myself and I would deliver it and I wouldn't charge them because that's an incentive for them to buy the car, right? Because if, if they don't have to travel two, three hours to buy this, you know, 20 grand car, it's in their interest. Yeah. So I was sort of adding value to the deal. Uh, and then that got me out there a little bit. So when I used to turn up as well, they used to say, oh, 
we thought a driver was going to turn up. I says, uh, no, no, I, I enjoy delivering cars, you know. Listen, that's, uh, a, that's a pro tip, that. that's a law of marketing called the law of perception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is, look, you're starting off, mm -hmm. but give the perception that you're already, you know, established, like you would answer, like you're in a showroom. Yeah, just professional. That's a pro yeah. tip, man. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So that's part of the building trust process, right? That's right. Is to have a professional outlook. That's number definitely. one. And then when you're dealing with them one to one, yeah. You would say it's about having a certain business ethics, would you say? Is it a certain yeah, character? Yeah, so uh, people tend to enjoy dealing with me. So when I used to deal with a person, like while I was selling them a car, that you know, if I could make them laugh and we could have a, a bit of a joke, uh, they would remember you a lot more, right? So they would remember, yeah, that's Shazan. Uh, he's based in Manchester. And for some reason, they'd always ring me again after six months or a year, and they would say, oh, I'm looking for my next car, Shazan. Uh, you know, would, could you help me? I says, no problem. Yeah, what car do you want? And I would have all the time in my hands to get and source from the car and they'd know that I deliver the car, right? So they just need to make a phone call, pretty much order a car what they want. I would provide it and get it delivered to them. So it was a service that I was providing a lot early on to uh, the normal customer at that time, but I never had a showroom. But then obviously I was uh, taking up the car park and I was getting a lot of, uh, you know, crap from my neighbours, and they would say, "Look, uh, you need to move all these cars." Um, and then, obviously, from that point, I uh, started looking at a showroom, uh, a unit, a place to trade from, and then that's how ACG yeah. Motors was created. How how long was it before you sold your first car? You're starting off from your home, mm -hmm. and then you got your unit. How long was that time span? Would you say? So I'd say about uh, three to four years. I was buying and selling. Yeah. I never had a, uh, a business. And then uh, once I built up my capital, everything I would make, I would reinvest in the business, carry on reinvesting uh, and carry on building uh, the capital in the business. And then at that point, I just thought, you know what? I haven't got the space here. So let me just open up a showroom. So that's a good point, actually. So you have to build up your experience because a lot of people spend too much time on planning, mm -hmm. like planning, planning, not taking action. Mm -hmm. Whereas you are learning from experience. Yeah. That's a key point that, like, just, you know, get, get stuck in, learn, yeah. make the mistakes. At the end of the day, I kind of had to do what I had to do because I never had capital, I never had money. Uh, and one things, one of the things that you realise is that when you go to people and you ask them, oh, can you lend me five grand, I'll give it you back, a lot of people would say no, even right. though they've got it. So a lot of people don't believe in your vision, but you have to believe in your vision. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how true, man. Because yeah. you have to rely on yourself. It'd be that's really self-reliant to be a good, successful entrepreneur. That's it. And you have to get used to the rejections, you're used to the no's in it. Yeah. you A successful person will always fail first before he succeeds. Yeah. He will go through loads of failures before he succeeds. So that's just, a, uh, if anyone is out there trying to be a businessman, uh, he has to understand he will have to, he will have to fail in order to succeed. That's something that everybody has to go through. There's no shortcut to that, innit? There's no shortcut to that. See, one of the things that a lot of people, uh, again, they show that, you know, if you want to be a, a millionaire overnight, do this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, invest. All them fake gurus. Invest in this networking group or something on social media that you don't even know. They might show you a Ferrari, a nice watch, and they might look at you and think, okay, let me just take his money and, you know, promise him that he's going to become a millionaire by investing 500 pounds into this course or something like that. So obviously I, I don't believe that any business or any businessman that is successful, he hasn't done that overnight. There's no chance someone has become a millionaire overnight. That doesn't happen. That's just a fallacy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well let's, let's explore that a little bit, bro. Yeah. Right. Because now we're seeing ACG, Mr. Shazan, the face of the car game. Mm -hmm. Right. But, What's your biggest challenges that people haven't seen? What's your struggles? What's your setbacks that you had? You talked about little failures. You have to learn from them. Mm -hmm. What did you experience in your business? So one of the things I experienced in life was in the beginning, uh, I never had money. So I, I was poor, you know, I came from poverty. So I had to create my money from somewhere, you know? So uh, whatever chance I had to make a little bit of money, I would try and sort of collate my wealth and sort of invest into something to build it further. So one of the setbacks I had was I had no money. Right. <laughs> Which is the number one complaint of people. I got no money to start yeah, a business. I got no money. I've got an idea. I want to make money, but I've got no money. But one thing I did was 
I was content with the little profit that I was making. So one things, one of the things that businessmen know is that never deny profit. So if if I invest fifty pound and I make ten pound, I'd be happy with that because that's ten pound I never had before. So, but I know that I can reinvest in something else and carry on doing what I'm doing. So uh, it's perseverance, you know, always look forward and invest, reinvest, carry on doing what you're doing. If you, what happens is when you're good at something, if you carry on doing it, you become very good at something. Yeah. You, you can become great at something. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you an example. Michael Jordan, you know, when he was younger, he would always shoot hoops. Yeah, and yeah. he would carry on missing, 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 missing until he got it in. Uh, but he perfected that. So it took a lot of practice over the years to perfect that one shot, which would get it in. Which is mo where most people are not willing to do. Exactly. They're willing to put that work in. A lot of people are not willing to take risks. Uh, a lot of people are not willing to put the work in. Uh, they will have that great idea, but they will never act upon it. Yeah. See, the whole thing is, it's, it's not the most smartest guy in the room that becomes successful. It's the, it's the one who acts upon what he says. Yeah. So if he says, I'm going to go and do this, the guy that actually does it is the guy that becomes successful. The guy that says, I want to be successful. I dream of doing this. The year after, he's, he's going to carry on saying the same thing. So he hasn't done anything different in that year. Yeah. So it's the man that actually says, I want to do this and goes out and does it. That's the man that becomes successful. Wow, bro. That's, yeah. a, that's amazing. <laughs> Again, a lot of it is mindset. Yeah. You know, having that mindset to persevere, to be consistent, stuff like that, right? But in the early stages, a lot of people feel like giving up mm -hmm. in the sense where you have to do that for a sustained period of time before yeah. you see the reward. That's right. And most people give up before it's, gonna, it's about to take off. That's right. So my question really is, what made you continue to Persevere, yeah, so, setbacks. so one of the things that you need as a businessman is courage. Yeah. So it, once you take that first step, if you fail, you need courage to take the second step and third step and fourth step. So the main thing is continue to do what you do, but you will only continue doing what you do if you truly believe in it. Right. So when, when there is a setback, one thing I would say is an entrepreneur, a, a businessman, he will always, when he has a challenge, he, he thinks about it differently. Yeah. So successful people have their own mindset in how they react to a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So when a problem occurs, a businessman doesn't look at that as a problem. He looks at that as a challenge on how I can find a solution. Yeah. How can I overcome this problem? He doesn't look at that as a problem and thinks, oh, this is going to stop me from doing what I do. He just looks at, at that as an obstacle. Right. That I need to get through this obstacle to get to here. Yes. So you need to have that belief and you need to have that mindset of looking at something as a challenge. Yeah. So one of the challenges that I had, obviously, there was a lot of people, I'll give you an example. Um, someone said to me, oh, you don't have any money. How are you going to own a showroom one day? Yeah, it's in, in the early days. Yeah, in the early days, yeah. Someone said to me, "You don't have any money. How are you gonna own a showroom one day? Yeah. How are you gonna buy and sell supercars one day or high high performance cars? You don't have any money." I says, "Don't worry about that. Yeah, I will. Yeah." I shook his hand and I says, "Don't worry about that. I will." And I knew what I needed to do. Yeah. So if I can't buy a supercar or high performance car, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy a Vauxhall Corsa worth two hundred pound. I'm gonna try and sell that to make a profit to get myself to a level where I can invest 20 grand, 40 grand, 60 grand, 100 grand into other cars. But I have to build my capital for that. Mm. Yeah? But if I, if, I, if I believed in what he said to me, if I looked at what he said to me as a problem, I might not have set out to create a business. I might have... So I had to look at what he said as a challenge. Yeah. 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 So one thing about businessmen and successful people that you will realize is that they they don't they don't have problems. They have challenges. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because a lot of people don't really fear failing as well. Mm -hmm. They fear the criticism of others mm -hmm. more than anything. Yeah. So most people when they hear that they're like, "Oh, do you know what I mean? Like exactly. I want to stop there." Exactly. And and there was a lot of people in the beginning that would say, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of people look down upon people who are poor, right? Yeah. They look up to the famous people who are successful and rich, 
but they look down upon people who have nothing. But one thing you got to realize in life is never look down upon anyone because you don't know what circumstances will bring them into something else. Yeah. Yeah. So he could come out from that and become someone very successful. But one thing I realized was that for, to, to build true wealth, you have to respect everyone on the same level. Yeah. So let me give you an example. Yeah. So uh, a celebrity rings me. Yeah. And they, uh, she, I think she, she was in Only Ways Essex. Yeah, this girl, right? And uh, I don't watch that. Yeah, so I didn't really know who she was. He does, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really watch the only way is Essex. So, because I remember I I used a lot of my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To not watch TV. Yeah, yeah. To literally do business. Yeah. Yeah. So when she rang me, she said to me, she was a celebrity, right? So she said to me, what celebrity deals have you got? Really? Yeah. So she's so putting herself on a pedestal, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I, I searched her up. <laughs> Celebrity. I deals. searched her up. I looked online, and I found out. Oh, she's got, you know, two million followers, right? She's verified on Instagram, right? Uh, she's got a Wikipedia page, all these things, and I thought, this is a successful celebrity, right? Supposedly, why does she need to have a, a deal on a car? Why does she need to have a discount or a celebrity deal? She doesn't. Yeah. Unless she actually does, she might she might not be wealthy. See, a lot of people we think yeah, yeah, fame yeah, yeah, yeah. is wealth. Yeah, fame does not equal wealth. There's a lot of people who are wealthy who are, who are not famous. So uh, obviously, like with me being me, I say we don't do celebrity deals. We treat everyone equally. Yeah. So whether you're uh, somebody off the street, whether you're a professional or whether you're a celebrity, I will deal with everyone equally. If anything, I will treat the normal person like a celebrity. Yeah? So that's something that obviously I've never really believed in. So I looked past all that, and I said, sorry, we don't have any celebrity deals that we do here. And I was okay losing that deal. It was, it was nothing wow. important for me. So this is where I see the sense of trust comes from when yeah. people say I trust this guy I get it because it's ingrained in your character bro yeah, yeah. a truly successful person yeah yeah will ring me and they will purchase a car without asking me for a discount because they don't need it right mm. so um, that's probably one, one thing I'll probably want to get across that a, a lot of successful people understand successful people the mindset is very similar so they respect each other yeah, yeah. I'm going to definitely dive into the uh, demographic on clients as well mm -hmm. because you get along with them so well, and it's, it'll be an interesting question as to what, what type of clients can afford these supercars, and mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Because the mindsets are kind of similar, and what they did to be able to be in that position to buy these cars. But one thing I wanted to ask you, bro, because looking at you now, talking to you, and this is our first time we're meeting, mm -hmm. you already seem like a genuine guy, mm -hmm. and all that talk you've been telling me about, you know, people have a sense of trust. I can see it now; it's coming through. Yeah. And you seem very non-judgmental and very approachable. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I like that about you. Would you say that's developed because of the rough upbringing that you've had? I'm able to relate to anybody because I come from nothing, right? So I, I believe everyone comes from nothing. That's the way I look at people. So when I look at them, I think, okay, I don't look at them as someone special just because he's got a degree or just because he's got fame or just because he's a super millionaire. You know, I, I just look at them as just like me. I came from nothing. You came from nothing. When I leave the world, I will live with nothing. You will live with nothing. So ultimately, we are equal. Yeah? So whatever work we put in in life, that's what you're going to receive. So I never really looked at someone as someone special. I just... And I never really look at myself as a special person either. Yeah. I have just obviously acted upon certain things that I've thought about and another person might not have. Just to segue back into your business, mm -hmm. right? We talked about earlier about... The Lamborghinis, mm -hmm. right? If you're on an average salary, nine to five job, it's going to take you a lifetime before you can afford one of them, right? Yeah, definitely. So I just want to explore, first of all, what's interesting is the, dem the demographic of clients that you deal with that are able to buy these sort of cars. Yeah, so generally with high value cars, it's, it's not going to be a, a, a normal average person that's going to be able to afford one, right? Exactly. Because of the value it is. Yes. So for example, a McLaren 600LT, 150 grand car, it, you know who's got 150 grand to spend but there is the, the demog the demographic that you will realize the person who's going to buy that car is going to be someone who's made the right decisions in life who's built the wealth to be able to afford that car 
would you say... So he could be a professional? Yeah, I've just got to say. Or he could be a businessman. Right. Yeah, so, you know, there are uh, professionals out there who are really, really skilled in what they do, yeah? So they have uh, an insane amount of knowledge in something that they're doing, they're highly skilled. And for that skill, he gets paid a very high salary. Yeah. yeah? So for example, you know, I sold a car last week to someone who works in Canon. Yeah. And apparently he's the guy who pretty much decides what happens in Canon. He creates the strategies. He's high up there. Yeah, he's high up there. So for him, he can afford certain cars because his salary might be a hundred grand a year. Do you understand? So all he has yeah. to do is carry on doing what he's doing in a year and be able to afford that McLaren or something of high value. He can do that. What, what would you say the split is between high earning professionals like doctors, CEOs, whatever, yeah. like in nine to five world versus entrepreneurs and business owners? Is there like a split, like a 60, 40 split from your clients, like 60% of my clients are business owners, for example. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to make money. You know what I mean? Because these guys are in a position to make the money. Yeah. So, so uh, wh the, the, what I would suggest, yeah, is if you want to make money in life, one thing you have to understand is you will have to build a skill yeah. which you're great at. Yeah? You will have to perfect something which you're really good at. So, for example, in my case, it was selling a car. So I have to perfect that skill. Yeah? I have to learn everything I need to know about cars, everything I need to know about selling cars, sorry about that, and everything I need to know about buying cars. So uh, in, in any field that you have or want to be in, you have to want to become the best at it, yeah? And this is why we have that 5% of people who are successful in that field. You have someone who's great in that field, and you have someone who's average, yeah? Because they've spent the years to perfect that skill. Now, ultimately, I understand that in the early years, the skills that you have, it might not pay you, right? So I was watching a podcast the other day of a guy called Khabib, yeah? <laughs> and someone was interviewing him, and they asked him, what was your early life like? And he said, my early years... I spent learning jiu-jitsu, martial arts, boxing, wrestling, all the sports. So as a, as a child, that's all he knows. He doesn't know anything else. So he asked his dad, oh, what about money? I need to earn some money. His dad said to him, you don't need to earn money. Let me worry about that. Yeah? You just learn to be the best in this field. So in the early years, learn all these skills and in the later years, when he came into MMA, what happened? He started getting paid, yeah? So all the skills that he learned in his early years made him great at something in his later years. So the dividends came after. So that's something that I would say is that whatever field you're in, learn that skill as perfect as you can to become great at it. That's why we have... In like, for example, in boxing, we have Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. You know, these guys have perfected that sport to become great at it, which is why they're, they're the Hall of Famers. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. There's loads of people who love boxing and there's loads of people who train. But them guys have done something different by perfecting it. Yeah. Which is what makes them great. Essentially, what you're saying is you get paid based on the value you provide to the marketplace. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And to start, you need to yeah. get so really good at a skill. Even, even if you're working for a company, yeah. if you can provide immense value to that company with your skills, you will end up getting paid a high salary. Yeah. That will happen. Yeah. Not everybody wants to be, become a businessman. Some people just want to learn something and become the best at it. But the thing is, this is this is this is what it goes back down to that a lot of people work for a company and they just think, I'll do enough just to get my salary. Yeah. Yeah. Do the minimum bounce. Do the minimum and go. Yeah. Pays my bills. I get my mortgage. I get my car at some point. I get married. I have children and then I die. Yeah? That's their life. Yeah. But there's some people who look at something and want to become the best at it. 
Now that's what makes you great. That's what's gonna pay you dividends. Is if you become, if you want to become great at something. Now the thing is, that's available to everybody. Yeah, everybody has the same twenty four hours. They say, right? Yeah. So you choose to invest that twenty four hours into what you want to become good at. If you want to be a great salesman, invest all your time into learning the skills what will make you a great salesman and you will become a great salesman so it sounds cliche but yeah. skills pay the bills it's a choice yeah <laughs> it's a choice what creates money look yeah. at that yeah what, yeah what creates the wealth yeah yeah how did i create my wealth yeah i learned about selling cars buying cars i learned about the product i learned about becoming a businessman i learned about how to become a good investor i learned about communication there's these I learned about marketing. These are things I learned and tried to perfect in my life that in the long term gave me dividends. So that's what I'm trying to say is that put your time into learning something. Don't chase the money. Try and become great at something and you will be given an opportunity from life that will pay you dividends. Going back to the client, the demographic of people, right? How are they typically choosing to buy their cars? So um, I would say 70% of people use arrangements of a finance finance package. So they borrow the money and pay on a monthly monthly period of, you know, say four years or five years. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of cash buyers as well uh, who have the cash available to be able to invest in a car and buy it. So the two methods are finance and cash. A lot of people choose finance because it, you know, if you look in the, the if you look at it from a financial perspective, if you've got a business and you want to invest fifty grand into your business and yeah. you want that to continue making funds for you, what you're going to do naturally, you're going to buy a car on finance and pay monthly because you don't want your money tied up into that vehicle. So even though they have the means to buy outright. Yeah. Those yeah. category of people choose to choose to finance, finance it. it because that makes more financial sense for them. Yeah. So we don't judge anybody who wants to finance a car, wants to buy it outright. We don't really care. We never sell we never oversell a finance package. Uh we never tell anyone to buy it outright. You know, a lot of people ring me and say, what's the best way to buy a car? I says exactly how you want to buy it. You either want to buy it cash or you want to buy it finance. It's entirely up to you. Uh, some people obviously trade their vehicles in as well. That's another way to fund a car. So they might want a part exchange. For example, if they they want to buy a hundred grand car and they've got an asset like a, a car that they want to part exchange, then they would would value that product and then they'd pay the difference and give us the funds. And there's a third category as well, isn't there? Which is the guys that are going broke trying to look rich. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, they can't afford yeah. the car, but they're just, you know, working nine to five job. Yeah. Got a down payment and barely making bare ends meet. Yeah, there's there's people <laughs> out there, but you know, in the society we live in, you know yourself, there's always going to be people like that. Yeah, yeah, there's always going to people uh, be people who who want the image of a successful person, but don't want to do what it takes to be a successful person. Mm. And those people are cowards, aren't they? You know, because they don't have the courage to actually do something to create something. A lot of successful, a lot of successful people don't need to look successful. Yeah. To be successful. Yeah. On that point, let's say someone has a determination; they want to be successful, but they don't know what to do in life. They've got the hard work, they've got the determination, the grit. Because there are a lot of people that you know hard working and they yeah. want to start a business, yeah. but they don't know what to do, bro. They don't know what, what to do. What advice would you give them? Uh, you see, I would always look at a person and try and see where their skill sets are. You know, so uh, a person, for example, if he's good in a certain field, then I would always tell them, explore that field further. So it's, it's all about looking at yourself in the mirror and trying to understand yourself that what am I good at? What value can I give to the world? Yeah. Yeah. What, what can I give to the world where the world can give me something back? It's what you said earlier, isn't it? Like, you know, go out there, make mistakes. Yeah. You'll find something that sticks. You like it. You'll find that something that you excel at. You're really good at. Yeah. Your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Do analysis of it, and then just yeah. run with one that yeah, works. That, experimenting is a good thing. Like obviously, in the early years, what did I do? Did a newspaper round. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work for me. Didn't work for you. Yeah. The ten pound wasn't enough. Yeah. Then the watches. Yeah. I sold watches. 
wasn't good for me. Yeah. It wasn't something I liked. And then boom, I sold the car. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I liked it. It made me tick. That's I enjoyed it. it. So you've got to do something that excites you. Yeah. Something that makes you happy. Something that you love. This is why a lot of people say, do something that you love because you'll be better at it, right? Yeah. So th you will find something in your life, something that will happen that will excite you. And if it excites you and you can make money from it, what better way to do, you know, what better way to earn money than to do something you enjoy? Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate, like, fulfillment, right? Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? If you enjoy podcasts, yeah. you're going to be better at it. You're going to mm. want to be better at it over the years. Just, exactly. Just take that for example. Yeah. So a lot of this, right, you know, you're the face of the car game, as you mentioned, right? And um, you talked about your business briefly, mm -hmm. but a large segment of it is mindset. Yeah, definitely. Do you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? So it just shows, bro, that the reality is you can change your circumstances, no matter what circumstances you're in, mm -hmm. and make your life into a success. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, what's your why? What, what's your motivation? Why do you continue to do what you do right now? You made the money. This is quite interesting because obviously, look, when I was younger, I never had money, right? Yeah. So for me, what do I want? I want the money. Yeah. So I want to give my mum a nice house. So in the in the early stages, why do I want to build wealth? To be able to give my mum financial stability. And then from there onwards, you know, you, you can you can get the bare minimum, you can buy a house, a car, then what's next? You know? So ultimately, what keeps me going is growing the business. See an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur, he never stops. Yeah. Yeah. It's a journey. It's a it's a lifelong journey that never stops. So there's no final destination. Yeah. So if he makes two million, he wants to make three. He wants to make four. So what keeps me going is just doing exactly what I've always done. Sorry about that. Uh, the enjoyment is exactly the same. Yeah. When I sell a supercar, or in the beginning when I first ever sold my first car, I still have the same feeling. When I interact with somebody and I enjoy talking to them. I still enjoy it in the same way. Yeah, so I, I just continue doing what I love. I love buying and selling cars. I love the car trade. It's something that I enjoy. So I will continue doing it. I will never stop. So the answer to your question is, why do I do it? I love it. Yeah. yeah? Would you say that's a big importance to attach then? You need to love what you do to be sustainable in the yeah. long run. There's some people out there that reach their goal and think, what's next? Yeah. yeah. So let me give you an ex perfect, a prime example, yeah, of someone that goes through life. They think if I get the house, I get the wife, I get the children, I get a car. That's my life done. Which is most people's yeah vision. Yeah. But what happens is they get to a position where they get the house, they get the wife, they get the child, they get the car, and then they think, what's next? What's my purpose in life? What do I do next? Mm. And then this is where a lot of people fall off. This is where people think, well, if I don't have a what's next or a purpose in life, then what's the point of me living? Yeah. yeah. So this is where the depression falls in. Yes. Yeah. This is where the low point comes in in life where you don't know what to do next. A, per, a prime example like Tyson Fury, all he ever wanted to I was do just gonna mention him. is become a heavyweight champion of the world. That's all he wanted to do. So he, he's achieved that. He's got all the money. He's got the belt, but he still can't find that contentment. So what's next for him? So that's why he continued to box. So I think with him, he will continue to box all his life because that's what he loves to do. So what will keep him going is that challenge. The moment he doesn't have that challenge, then he falls back into depression. So a lot of people go through yeah. their own challenges in life and their own mental health issues. But one thing I would say is that it, this is why it's so important to have a goal, to have a vision, to have a purpose. Um, and, and when I was younger, when I understood what I wanted to give to the world, I, I gave myself a purpose. I thought my purpose is to buy and sell cars in terms of to earn money, right? Yeah. So that keeps me going in life. So I never get, I don't wake up one morning feeling low. You know, I'm, I'm going to go do what I love to do, buy and sell cars. 
Yeah. So that'll just keep you going. It'll be a different car. Yeah. It'll be a different client, but it'll just keep you going. When we spoke on the phone briefly yeah. uh, for the first time, uh, you said a quote which I wrote down. Yeah. Because I loved it so much. What was the quote? You said, there's always going to be another struggle. There's always going to be another challenge. There's always going to be another win. Yeah. I love that. How I interpret it is the chronic verse, bro, which is verily after hardship comes ease. Yeah. So that's, that. I just kept those two together. Yeah. Bit of a side note. So one thing is, is that people think if they have all these things, yeah, they will find contentment and it will complete the puzzle of life. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason I mentioned that quote um, was that the struggle never ends. There's always going to be a struggle. There's always going to be something else. It never ends. So you might, you might as well accept that life is a struggle, yeah, and start looking at, looking at them as challenges, right? So any problem that incurs in your life, whether it's something in your control or something that's not in your control, just look at it like a challenge. Because there's a lot of things that happen in my life which I can't control. But there's a lot of things that I can control, but there's some things I can't control. So these are like random incidents in your life which can occur to you, which will totally throw, throw you off your journey. But it's all about how you respond to that challenge. So it could be a problem, you know, whether it's someone passing away, whether it's you going broke overnight, you know, anything can happen in life, right? Yeah. But always look at it like a challenge. And if you adopt that understanding of life, that life is a struggle and it will always be a struggle until the end. Yeah. That's it. And look at that struggle as a challenge. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, man, it just shows like how if you just flip, have a paradigm shift, yeah. you can just change your whole outlook and your whole yeah. perspective on life, man. Yeah. And you just make sure life a bit more smooth sailing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. A more stoic, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You recently featured in an article, Yeah. right? Not too long ago. Yeah. Um, you were driving, I think it was a test drive, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, with a yeah. customer. Yeah. You seen a woman on a bridge and people passing by literally yeah. watching her about to throw herself off the bridge. That's right. You, respect to you, brother, told the passenger, look, turn around, turn the car around. You know, let's see, let me see what's happening. Yeah. Share that story with us, bro. What happened? Yeah, so uh, I was on a, a test drive with a customer. He was wanted to buy an RS3, wanted to test it out. So I took him on my normal test routes near the showroom. And then we went past the bridge. Um, and when we went past, we saw someone that was about to jump off the bridge, right? And then we saw like, quite a lot of people around surrounding the area. So initially we thought it's a car accident. Let's just drive past. But then I said, slow down. And then I saw someone that was obviously about to jump off a bridge. Yeah. So he said, oh, look at that plonker, whoever it is, you know, that was, that was this is the customer. This is the customer. Yeah. yeah. Now I said, stop the car. Yeah. So stop the car. I jumped out took the keys and I says, give me a couple of minutes. Let me see what I can do here. Yeah. And then I went past the crowd and I asked the question, I go, what's going on here? They said, someone's about to jump off a bridge. And for me, I looked at that as like, why is no one helping this person? Right. Yeah. Why is no one approaching? Now, the thing is a lot of people would be scared at that, at that point. Cause if I go there and I approach this person, they might jump. I might get the blame. Yeah. 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 Or they might look at that, uh, and just not care. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reality of life. People don't care about people. Yeah. But when I looked at that, I thought, someone's about to kill themselves. Let me try and save them. Yeah, so I walked. See, you need to have courage to do these things, yeah? Mm. So when I looked, mm. at, you could see that, there, you know, there was 100 people there. None of them were helping. Yeah, yeah. So I obviously, coincidentally, happened to be there. I walked through the crowd confidently. And while I was walking, I understood that clearly this person's at a low point that they want to take their life, yeah? So all I need to do is convince them to not take their life. That's it. Mm. And you understand that in, in the business that I'm in, that's what I'm all about. I convince people to buy cars, you know, when, when I'm selling someone something, that's what takes place. I'm convincing them to invest 40, 60 grand into a car, right? So I already know that I have some experience in being able to convince her not to self, right? 
So I'm approaching and I approached it with positivity. I says, what's going on here? What are you doing? You know, I didn't say, oh, what's going on? You know, I didn't do all that. I says, you okay? What are you doing? She says, the first thing she said was, no one cares about me. Really? Yeah. No one loves me. Yeah. So I understood that this person obviously had low self-esteem. She had no love for herself. Yeah. And I thought I'll I'll go up there and I'll ask I'll ask her a couple of questions. I said, "What's your name?" She goes, "Oh." She said, "Oh, my name's Tess." So she responded. So automatically, I knew that she just wanted someone to maybe talk to her. Yeah. Maybe show her some kindness, and you know. So I asked her her name, and you know, automatically when you ask someone their name, they feel a little bit like this person. Relatable. Cares enough about us. Cares about enough, yeah. Where he's asking out yeah. my name. So I go, what's your name? She says, my name's Tess. So I said, Tess. So at that point, I created that relationship with her. I says, Tess, what are you doing? And when she said, oh, no one cares about me, no one loves me, I says, I care about you. Yeah? Uh, and she says, no one cares about me. I said, I, clearly I care about you because I got out of my car, I walked through this crowd and I came to help you. So therefore I do care about you. Yeah. Um, and she says, so obviously she was going through some severe problems in her life. Uh, I can't discuss all of them, but she was at a low point in life where it was over. She was about to quit. Now I'm not a quitter. I don't quit. When there's a problem in my life, I don't quit. I don't give up. But a lot of people do. But she was at that point where she was like, I can't carry on with my life and I would rather quit. There's no point me even living it. So I gave her some value in her life. I says, whatever you're going through in your life, don't worry about it. I've been through it all. Yeah, I've been through all the worst situations in your life, probably even worse than yours. So whatever it is, you will get through it. Them are the only things I said to her. And then the police turned up. And the, f the funny thing is, when the police turned up, they were, like, not getting close to her either. They were backing off. And the first thing the copper said to her was, he goes, uh, would you like a fag, love? Do you want to jump in the back of my van? Yeah. Now, clearly these guys are not trained yeah. in how to speak to people. This girl's about to kill her like... Do you really think she's going to be interested in something like that? So there's there's a way you approach someone. So I said to the copper, back off. You know, I says, back off. I'm dealing with this. Yeah. And the way I said it, he understood and he backed off. And then I got closer to Tess. I says, look, I'm going to come a little bit close to you and you're going to climb over yourself. I'm not going to grab you or nothing like that. And you know, your parents are going to be worried about you. So come over on this side. Nothing's going to happen to you. No one's going to harm you. No one's going to care about what's just happened here. Yeah. But just do the right thing. Come over and do it yourself and believe in yourself that, you know, create. Look, I care about you. Yeah. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't have come here and done all this. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm spending my time. I spent about 15 minutes with her, right? Just talking to her about a couple of things. And then I says, come over on this side. Everything's going to be okay. And then she chose, she, 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 took, she took a deep breath. She went, and then she came over and she breathed out. And then like straight away, relief. Yeah, relief. She made the right decision. And then obviously everyone got excited. Everyone was happy. The police literally restrained her, threw her in the back of the van. It's just a normal day for them. But that story just shows you guys that, look, anyone that's going through anything in life, they need to take the right step and not give up. Yeah. Simple as that. Don't quit. There's a lot of people I've heard that, you know, since then, there's it's been a massive thing, mental health. But the thing is, all these people need to do is adopt a... Uh, adopt a mindset that don't give up, don't quit. Whatever problems you have, look at it like a challenge and you will overcome them challenges if you continue.
that's the real pandemic at the moment, depression. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think what you said there yeah. is so true, man. Like, listen, it's reversible. You have to become responsible. Mm. You have to take responsibility of your actions. That's ultimately what's going to keep you going. Because if you don't take responsibility over your actions, that look, if I wake up in the morning and I'm waking up at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and I'm not doing anything, and I'm watching TV, and I'm binge eating, I'm not doing nothing productive in my life, how can I be successful? How can I expect to be successful? Do you understand? Yeah. There's got to be yeah, some understanding and taking that responsibility upon yourself that if I don't do these things, then I won't be able to achieve the things I want to. See, the thing is, if I'm waking up in the morning and I'm going to the gym and spending an hour there every day for 10 years, Am I going to expect results? 100%. Or is it going to be lucky to no. get results? No. It's expected, isn't it? Expected. So that's one thing that I would say to a lot of people is that you've got to take responsibility of your actions. You have to do that. If you're not putting the work in, don't expect to get anything. Don't expect to get anywhere. And that's one thing that I would say that if you're putting a great amount of discipline and keeping it consistent for many years... It won't be a surprise that you're going to be a successful guy, you're going to be a millionaire, you're going to be a professional in that field. It's not going to be a coincidence because it's expected because of the work you put in. If you're watching this podcast episode, you need to take notes, man, mm. because we just put a blueprint there. It yeah. starts with a mindset, yeah. you know, believe in yourself, yeah. have a clear goal, have a vision, right? And the last thing you just mentioned there, which is the end part of the puzzle, yeah. is take 100% of accountability. Accountability, yeah. You are responsible for the direction of your life. Yeah. No one's going to help you. You start with yourself first, yeah. put in the work, and then, you know, later on, as you said, the Habib example, money will come, mm. the network will come, and be an honest, trustworthy guy in the process. Yeah. Don't look down on anyone throughout this whole journey. Mm. Because on your way up, when you climb the ladder of success, you might come down, and, you know, the person that you stepped on, you know, he might be on his way up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So all that kind of stuff. Bro, what's next for ACG, man? What's the next goal? What's the next vision? Well, I'm just going to continue doing what I, uh, what I do best, um, just buying and selling cars. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that in the best way I possibly can. Um, and with any business, uh, you've got to expand. You've always got to look ahead, you know, I might be in a position now where I've got a showroom. I might need to have two showrooms or three or four, but I will need to expand because that's the normal progression of a, any business. It always goes up. Yeah. So uh, with the way we're going, it's been great. Um, you know, going strength to strength. Yeah. It? It's, it's it's success breeds success. Yeah. So if you're successful in something, you will continue to be successful in it. So. Uh, I'm just going to continue doing what I do best and uh, just stay tuned. Stay uh, tuned, yeah. Thing, yeah. And we try and help people as well, you know. In some of the content that I have on social media, yeah. you know, I try and portray and show people that, look, you know, no matter what you're going through, struggle, you will get through it. Um, we always try and portray that message that, you know, if you want to become something in life, try and become it. You know, try. You know, Even if you fail, try again. So I always try and sort of push people. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing that I always, like, I love pushing people. Like, you know, a lot of uh, young people come and they want to be successful and they want to be wealthy. Uh, and I, I just give them that message that, you know, continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and become the best at what, you, what you're doing and put the time in. And if you put the work in, you will end up getting somewhere. If people want to reach out to you, buy or sell their cars, what's mm -hmm. the best place to reach out to you? Is it Instagram? Is it your website? So I have various ways. You can contact me on my contact number, 077-01334-786. Oh, yeah, he's, he's bold in putting you that can, number out there. Yeah. <laughs> you can email me, info yeah. at acgmotors.co.uk. Instagram, acgmotorsltd. Website, www.acgmotors.co.uk. You can literally go on there. Various ways I get the message. You know, whether you want to buy or sell, anywhere we can help, we always will. 
respect, brother. Shazan, thanks for coming on the podcast, man. Mm-hmm. It's been absolutely yeah. amazing having you on, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's my first podcast, guys. So Exclusive. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's my first podcast. So I thought I'd give that opportunity to Habib uh, because the way he approached me was in a very respectful way. And I respect another man who is respectful towards someone. So you always give someone respect and you get it back as well earn your respect in life so it was very respectful the way Habib contacted me and I thought I'll give him that opportunity and hopefully this benefits your audience that's thank the main you, thing means a lot brother yeah. thank you so much yeah. just once again thanks for coming on the podcast brother yeah. respect man if you enjoyed the podcast make sure to leave a comment like and subscribe it helps the channel more than you know with that being said peace